Yo, what's good YouTube? Happy New Year and I hope you're ready to continue learning how to code in 2023. So for today's video, we're going to learn how to build a Chrome extension with a real life example. An extension is basically software built on web technologies that allow you to customize your experience. So right now I'm back in Toronto and I have a small dilemma. I want to play drop-in sports, but the drop-in website could be a little bit better. The main issue that I have with this website is that it doesn't have a filtering system. For example, if I want to play basketball on Monday, I want to see all the available drop-ins for Monday. And in order to do that, I need to scroll through each and every listing and look for community centers that have openings on Monday. This is very tedious and it takes a lot of time to scan through each and every community center. So instead, since I'm a programmer, I'm going to build a simple extension that will allow me to filter by specific days of the week so that way it will make my life a lot easier. As you can see here, you can filter by the day of the week and boom, just like that, you see all of the available drop-ins for that specific day. And of course, I could have made it look a lot prettier, but I'm a lazy guy and I'm happy with this MVP. Anyways, let's start the tutorial. Cool, so first let's create a new folder and let's call it drop-in extension. Next, open VS Code and click open folder and double click on the folder that we just created. Cool, and now click new file. And inside this file, we want to open the squiggle brackets like this and hit enter and press command S to save the file. And we want to name the file manifest.json. So manifest.json like this and click save. And basically this file will contain JSON, which is basically a dictionary that stores key value pairs. So inside this file, I'm going to copy some stuff that you're going to copy. So first we have manifest underscore version, which is three, which is the current supported version for Chrome extensions. So next we have the name, which is the name of the extension. And here we have the version, which is 0.1.0. And as you develop your extension, you can increase the version number for each incremental upgrade. Next, we have the description, which explains what your extension does. And this is the most important part of this file, the content underscore scripts. And here we have JS, which stands for the file that contains the script that we want to run on a specific website. And next we have this matches key. And anything inside the square brackets is the website that we want to apply script.js to. So in this case, we want to apply it to toronto.ca, data parks, prd, sports, drop in, basketball.index.html. Cool. Once you copy this, save the file. And next, create a new tab by tapping twice on the top. And now let's create our script.js. And in here, type script.js and hit save. So for this video, we're going to be doing JavaScript. So if you don't have any JavaScript experience, don't worry. I have a whole coding bootcamp playlist that will teach you how to program and how to use JavaScript. So first, just to make sure that our extension works, let's do console.log and type hello world. And let's end it with a semicolon and hit save. Cool. Now open your browser and on the right of the address bar, you're going to see this Chrome extension. So click it and then next go to the bottom and click manage extensions. And on the top right, you're going to see developer mode. So toggle this on. And here you're going to see load unpacked. So click this one and then look for the folder that we just created. So drop in extension and click select. And here you can see a new extension. And if you look here, you're going to see sports drop in filter, which is the name. Then you can see the version number 0.1.0. And here you'll see the description as well. Cool. Now go back to the Toronto website and right click it and click inspect and go to console and now refresh the page. And in the console, you're gonna see hello world, which means that our extension worked. Nice work. The next part is the most fun. Now we're gonna do some DOM manipulation so that we can edit the HTML on the page. I'll try my best to keep things simple, but if you get lost, I cover this stuff in more detail in my playlist. Anyways, in the developer tools, let's go to the elements tab and I'll drag this over so that we can see more stuff. And let's drag this over a bit. And as I move my mouse throughout the HTML code, you're going to see parts of the website getting highlighted. So I only care about the tables below. So I could just right click this and click inspect again. And this will bring me to the code that I care about. So now I'll scroll down. And as you can see, there's an H2, which represents this title. And then there's a table, which contains the schedule. So let's collapse this. And if you look carefully, there's a lot of these PFR listings. So the first one will be Adam Beck Community Center. And we scroll down. And the next one is Amesbury. And if I hover my mouse over the second one, it highlights Amesbury. So based on this, I can assume that each PFR listing represents each community center. So let's go back to the console. So basically in the console, we can run JavaScript code. For example, we can do document dot get element by class name, open the parentheses and open the quotation marks. 
and type PFR listing and close the string and close the parentheses. And as you can see, it found 81 of these PFR listings. So that means there are 81 total community centers that offer basketball. And basically we want to hide a PFR listing if it doesn't fit our filter. So as a quick example, let's hide all of these listings. So go to the front of the line. And so let's do let listings equals this and then hit enter. So now we can loop through each of these listings and change the display style to none so that we can hide it. So do for let listing of listings and close the parentheses and open the squiggle brackets. And now inside here, we can do listing dot style dot display equals none like this. And now hit enter and look at that, they're all gone. But obviously we don't wanna hide each and every one. Instead, we wanna add our own logic to decide which ones to hide and which ones to show. So basically an extension will run JavaScript code. So basically the code that we wrote inside the console can be moved inside our script. So let's copy this first line and go to our script and let's remove hello world and paste it here. Now let's add a semicolon at the end. So let's keep things simple for now and let's only filter for Mondays. So let's create another variable and call it let date filter equals Monday, which matches the Monday in the table. Cool, so before we move further, we have to understand the structure of the HTML code. So let's go back to the page and let's inspect the first table. So inspect, and if we look at the elements, inside here we have a table, and inside the table there's a T head and a T body. So let's expand the T body, and inside here there are rows for each available day. And let's expand the first one. And here, as you can see, there's 7 to 9 p.m. for Monday, and it looks like for Tuesdays to Sundays, it has this weird looking string, MBSP, which I'm gonna assume just represents this empty space. And let's also look at the second one. And here, as you can see, Monday, Tuesday is the weird string. And then Wednesday, you see 7 to 9 p.m. So basically for each PFR listing, we want to get these TRs inside the T body. And then inside each TR, we need to check for each of these days that it doesn't have this NBSP and whether this day matches our date filter. And basically for each listing, we just wanna check how many rows there are that match our filter. And based on that, we can decide to whether hide or show that PFR listing. So now let's write some code. So first things first, let's write a loop. So for listing of listings, and then open the squiggle brackets and hit enter. So now for each listing, let's get the rows. So we can do listing dot query selector all. And here we want to grab the TRs inside the T body. So we can type T body and then TR like this. And then basically now we want to loop through each of these rows. So go to the start of the line and type four, open the parentheses and type let row of this, and then close the parentheses and open the squiggle brackets again, and then hit enter. So now for each row, we have to go through each column, which represents the days of the week. So to get the TDs, all we do is row dot get element by tag name, open the parentheses and open the quotation marks and type TD. And since we have to loop through this, all we have to do is write another for loop. So now go to the start and type for let td of row.getElements by tag name and then close the parentheses and open the squiggle brackets. And now hit enter. And now inside the td, let's grab the date. So do const date equals td.dataset.info. And then we need to get the text inside each one. So let's do const text equals td.innerHTML. And then do a dot trim so that way we can remove the spaces within the text. And now basically we just need to check if text does not equals ampersand nbsp semicolon and also if the date equals equals our date filter. And now open the squiggle brackets and if we find a match that means that this row is a row that matches our filter. So let's add another variable to keep track of how many rows that are valid for each of these listings. So on line four, hit enter and type let total valid days equals zero. And then copy this and then on line 11, paste and then do plus equals one and then end it with a semicolon and hit enter. And basically once we find a valid one, we can break out of the loop immediately. So do break and add a semicolon. And now basically if a listing has zero valid days, that just means that this listing doesn't have any available drop-ins for that specific day. So basically after this loop, we can decide whether we want to hide this listing or not. So hit enter after line 15, type if total valid days equals equals zero, and then open the squiggle brackets. And then inside here, we can do listing dot style dot display 
equals none. And now let's hit save. And now let's go back to our browser and go to the extensions. And here you have to click this button to update the code. So click it. And now go back to the sports page. And now let's refresh the page. So this community center has a Monday, which is correct. This one has Monday as well. This one has Monday. This one has Monday. This one has Monday. So things are looking good so far. However, each listing has a lot of rows. And technically, I only care about the first one. So let's add some more logic to only keep the first row and remove the rest. And basically inside this loop where we go through each row, we can add an if statement here. So hit enter and do if total valid days is greater than one and then open the squiggle brackets. And here we can do row dot style dot visibility equals collapse. And the reason why we use visibility collapse here is because we're hiding a row inside a table. If we did display none, it may cause some layout issues inside the table. So let's end this with a semicolon and now hit save. And now let's go back to our browser, go to extensions and reload. And now let's go back and refresh the page. And look at that, I think we have a bug. It didn't work exactly as I wanted to, but it seems like for some of them it worked. So let's go back and double check our code. So after looking at the code, I realized that I missed one thing. So basically, once we know that a listing has a valid day, we know that we can hide the rest of the rows. So let's add one more variable here. So hit enter after the loop for the row and do let has valid day equals false. And now copy this variable. And after we verify that this is a valid row, we can also update this variable. So do has valid day equals true. So basically, if the row is not a valid day or the total valid days is greater than one, we would hide the rest of the rows. So basically has valid day will be false if all the rows don't have a day that matches our filter. So if that row does not have a valid day, we would hide it. Or if we have more than one valid days, we would hide the rest of the rows. So now let's hit save. And now let's go back to our browser and click extensions and then click reload and then go back to the page and refresh. And there you go. We have our filter that only filters on Mondays. So to wrap things up, we're gonna add buns so that we can filter by days. So now let's go back to our code. Before we do that, let's clean up this code. So here we're using a date filter, which can change to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. So basically we can turn this code into a function so that way it can be reused. So let's do function filter, open the parentheses and put date filter and then open the squiggle brackets and then indent all of the code inside and then close the squiggle bracket and then scroll up and let's remove this and then remove this as well. And then let's remove these white lines. So now we have this nice function that will filter by a specific day. And now all we need to do is just create the buttons. So now scroll down and now hit enter. So to speed up the video, I'm just gonna copy some code over. So this function here basically creates a button. It takes a text and it basically takes a closure that gets handled when the button is clicked. And basically the text is either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and etc. And now let's go to the next line and I'm gonna paste some more code. And now I have a function called buttons container which basically creates a container with all of the buttons. So here are the five days, Monday, Tuesday to Friday. And here we create a container, which is basically just a div. And then we loop through each of these days. And then we create a on click function, which basically resets the rows and it calls filter based on the day. And I'll show you this reset rows function in a bit. So after this closure, we basically create this button, giving it the day and then the closure. And then we add it to the container. And then finally, we make one more button called all, which basically just calls the reset rows function. And the reason why we need a reset rows function is so that way we can return the page back to its original state before things were hidden. So let's create this function. And I'm getting lazy, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So basically for the reset rows function, it will have two variables called hidden divs and hidden table rows, which basically keeps track of the divs and the rows that are hidden. So let's copy these two and scroll to the top of the file and hit enter here and paste it. And let's put let in front of them so that we can declare them as variables. And now scroll to the bottom. For anywhere in the code where we change the display to none, we basically have to turn it back to a block so that way it's visible. And similarly for the rows, when we change the visibility to collapse, we have to change it back to visible. And the only spots that we change the visibility is inside our filter function. So let's scroll to our filter function. So in here, as you can see, we change visibility equals collapse. So after we change it to collapse, we should keep track of that. So here we should do hidden table rows dot push. And here we'll push the row. So that way we can keep track of it. And then we should do the same thing for each of the divs. And here we do hidden divs 
dot push and then listing and then end it with a semicolon and hit save and then the last thing we have to do is add these buns to the html so now go back to your browser and basically i added the buns underneath this location bar so let's right click this and click inspect and as you can see this location is within this div that has a class called select underscore location underscore box so now let's go back to our code and scroll to the bottom and then hit enter and then here we can do let select location box equals document dot get elements by class name and then inside here type select underscore location underscore box and since this returns a list of elements we're going to get the first instance of this location box so add a square bracket and put a zero and then end it with a semicolon and now go to the next line and type select location box dot after and then open the parentheses and then type dot after which basically allows us to add html after this element so now scroll up and here we want to call our buttons container which basically returns a container with all of our buttons so now scroll down and paste it here and end it with a semicolon and hit save and now for the last time go back to your browser go to extensions and then reload the page and now go back and then hit refresh and here you go we have our buttons so let's filter for thursday and as you can see we only get thursdays and let's do Wednesday. And then now if we click all, we basically get everything back. Nice work. But now what if I want to find drop-ins for another sport? So let's click this drop down and let's do floor and ball hockey. And now our filters are gone, but it looks like this page is very similar. So I'm going to show you one more trick before I leave. So let's go back to our editor and go to your manifest.json. So as you can see, we're only matching pages with basketball. So if we want to handle ball hockey, we're going to have to add another link with ball hockey. But actually what we can do is we can use regex. So instead of doing drop-in slash basketball, we can remove everything after the drop-in. And here we can put a star. And basically a star allows it to match any pattern after this initial link. So basically it can match basketball, volleyball, floor hockey, etc. So hit save and go back to your browser. And I promise this is your last time to refresh the extensions. So refresh it. And now let's go back and then hit refresh and boom there you go i can filter for thursday tuesday wednesday and now let's play some volleyball there you go friday thursday wednesday isn't this awesome anyways this tutorial is getting really long now i hope that you guys learned something new please treat this as a starting point as you can imagine you guys can do really awesome things with the stuff that i just taught feel free to build other extensions and let me know in the comments below and also this is a really cool project that you can add to your resume Anyways, that's it for me. Happy coding, happy new year, and I'll see you next time. Peace.